Hey folks, thank you for tuning in. I am Priyansh from Team Signals and in this tutorial, we'll monitor your Python application with full stack open source APM tool called Signals. So you might have heard the name and let's dive in to instrument the Python app. So in this article, uh, yeah, you'll learn how to set up application monitoring for Python apps using open, open source solutions and Signals. We we'll also use open telemetry and, uh, but first let me tell you a little story, the cost of a millisecond. So Tab Group, it's a financial services industry firm estimated that a broker's electronic trading firm, if it's five milliseconds behind the competition, it could lose $4 million in revenue per millisecond. So that's huge. Well, um, millions, we are talking in millions. So that's huge. And also for Google, half a second delay in the search result caused a 20% drop in traffic. So suppose there are hundred people or thousand people coming to your website, then you are losing 200 people if your website is even half a second late to load. So that's where distributed tracing and monitoring what's going on with your application comes into picture. And this is the main purpose of this video. So Signos is a kind of APM. You can see a full stack open source application monitoring and observability platform native to open telemetry. Um, where you can track your metrics like P99 latency, error rates, external calls API, and much more. We'll dive into it uh, in a short while. So there are four things that we are going to do in this video. First of all, we'll install Signos locally on my machine. I'm using M1 MacBook Air. Then we'll clone the sample Flask application, and then we'll instrument the app with OpenTelemetry, and then set the OpenTelemetry exporter endpoint to a specified port of the machine where Signos is installed. So OpenTelemetry can send data to it. And then finally, we'll use Signos dashboards to analyze metrics and traces. So let's dive in and yeah, this uh, what you currently see on the screen is uh, the UI of Signos dashboard. So this is a bit outdated one. You will see the new ones in a short while. So yeah, for that you also need to have MongoDB database installed on your system. So let's install Signos. So you can copy the command over here. If you're on Mac OS, then you need to have Docker desktop already installed. If you are on Linux, then uh, uh, the installed script will download and install Docker for you. And for Windows, we currently do not support Windows. So let's copy over here, go to my item terminal. And yeah, as you can see, I have already done it for you. Git clone the main branch of Signals CD into the Signals deploy folder and run the install.sh script. So basically in a nutshell, what this script will do is uh, it will just detect my OS, start Docker, and it will pull the latest container images from for Signals and make containers for them. So it takes a minute and a half for that. And yeah, we get a success message. Installation is complete. The UI is running on localhost 3301. So let me show you real quick. And yeah, when prompted, you must share your email ID here. And then thank you. Let's go back. And yeah, this is the Signals dashboard, the new updated one. Uh, we are on version uh, 0.91 currently uh, at the time of shooting this video. So you see front end customer driver and route the four applications that you see currently on the screen are actually the demo applications called hot road that Signos ships with. You can also install Signos without them. So let's get back to the blog and yeah, you can for detailed instructions, you can visit our documentation to install Signos with Docker or Helm charts. And the UI is on 3301. I just showed you Yeah, the application is uh, called hot road which comes bundled with Signos installation package. This is how it looks like. And let's moving on, moving on. Yeah, so there are some prerequisites for this app. You need to have Python 3.4 or newer installed. And yeah, I've already have. For MongoDB, yeah, you can uh, download by following the link over here for Linux and uh, for Windows as well. You can yeah select your version and download according to the commands given on the official MongoDB website. Let's go back and you can also need to, you also need to start the services MongoDB services by running brew services start MongoDB. I have my services up and running so I won't be doing that for you. It should be pretty simple and straightforward. So let's follow the step. You need to clone the sample Flask app repository that we have prepared for you. So just copy it over here, terminal and yeah I did that also for you. So just uh, clone it over here and cd into sample flask app and it's running on uh, vs code so yeah, these are the files that will run in a while let's go back and yeah let's run the app and i think it won't run because we need to have flask as a dependency installed first but let's try 
all right it's running that's good yeah as you can see i have abc and q as a task name uh, pre-populated in the mongodb database so let me delete some and we'll make a new one flask is a cool tech date 2209-2021 priority let's medium and uh, let's create so we created it let me mark it completed and go to complete a tab and it's completed so it's kind of a dummy app for uh, you to see it listed over the in the application section so you can visualize uh, the traces and the metrics for that dummy app in your dash signals dashboard so let's go ahead and yeah control c to exit the app when you have made sure it's running properly so let's do that great so yeah you need to install some dependencies and for that you need to run this command so the dependencies are present over here so we have eight dependencies currently flask pymongo etc etc so let's do that real quick so you can see it says uh, requirement already satisfied so if you're running this for the first time that then you won't see this message and yeah so if it hangs while installing grpc io then you can uh, follow this uh, link or perform these three commands and then you will be good to go so now let's install application specific packages so this command figures out which instrument packages the user might want to install and it installs them yeah pretty much it's basic thing and uh, let's install again you can see it says requirement already satisfied because i have tested this app on this machine previously so while it's installing let's go back to the blog and see the next step so yeah we need to configure the environment variables to run the app and send data to signal so by far this is the most important step so in place of service name you need to write the service name of your application you can name it whatever you like and the ot otl exporter otlp endpoint so in this case ip of the machine where signals is installed so let me make it more clear to you i write a service name over here and where it says ip uh, IP of Cygnos so you need to write either localhost if Cygnos is installed locally on this machine or if it's on some VMware like AWS or Azure then write the IP of the machine where you will install Cygnos or if it's uh, on hosted on your custom domain then your domain name should be over here like uh, like what netflix.com so uh, write netflix over here so this is the final command it's how it looks like so we named our app python app simple straightforward and yeah it's localhost because we're running locally you can also write 127.0.0.1 also that both means the same so let me copy it over here and yeah we are done installing the dependencies and run the app so yeah debug mode should be off and the app is running i guess let's go back refresh the page add some more tasks so let me write some dummy tasks because we just need to interact with the app and it will generate some telemetry data that we can visualize on the Cygnos dashboard. So let's go back to complete, uncomplete. You can see we are hitting the complete URL multiple times. Let's delete one and uh, let's uncheck one. All right, so now we should have some data in the Cygnos dashboard. Let me refresh it one time. And yeah, you can see the Python app present over here and we have some data we just hit this these urls as i said uh, completed endpoint and yeah we have one trace associated with it so yeah this is the kind of the gain chart and flame graph view that signos ships with as you can uh, click on any of the span and you will see on the right the tags associated with it so you can see the db system is mongodb the peer name and etc etc db statements and peer port Let's click on one different span and you can see its tags associated associated with it. So if you wish to see a more detailed trace detail page, so let's go to the service front end. Uh, let's click on this endpoint, select the trace, the highest duration trace. And yeah, this is a much better trace details page. We have 50 spans. Your app can have like 1000, 2000 spans. So the red ones that you see over here are actually the error spans. Uh, let me click on one. 
go to events and I know this is an error span because it's Redis timeout as mentioned in the events tab. So you can pretty much easily figure out what's going wrong with your application and uh, save some money. <laughs> All right, so let's click on the 15 span one and click on focus on selected span. So now you will get to view only these 15 spans. This feature is most helpful when you have some uh, like uh, say a thousand spans and you need to focus on a f particular number of spans so this feature might be useful so click on reset focus and you will be back and yeah that's that's it i think for this video if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us on our community slack channel or uh, comment down below our slack channel is a place where we discuss things around open source observability and apm Links to everything will be of course in the description below. We are looking forward to your feedback on how we can make Signos better together. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Keep instrumenting your apps.